Hey everyone, today I would like to do a quick comparison between the all new DJI Air 3 and the Mini 3 Pro with a few pros and cons for each. So if you are considering buying one of these drones or if you already own the Mini 3 Pro and are considering upgrading to the new Air 3, you can make an informed decision. Now I have been flying the DJI Air 3 for a few weeks now and I am happy to say that I will still be bringing the Mini 3 Pro in my camera bag and flying it often as I think these two drones excel in different areas. I want to make absolutely no bones about it, I think both these drones are absolutely fantastic. So let's take a look at seven different reasons the DJI Mini 3 Pro is worth considering or staying with if you already own it and seven more reasons why you might want to consider purchasing or upgrading to the new DJI Air 3. Let's jump right in. Now, if you're new around here, welcome to The Drone Creative, the channel that helps you learn more about flying drones. From the basics to the most advanced techniques to help you get better looking videos and images with your drone. So if you would like to see more of that, then please consider subscribing by clicking that button down below and make sure to check that notification bell while you're down there to make sure that you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. It would be greatly appreciated. All right, when it comes to the first pro of the Mini 3 Pro, it it has to be its size and portability. Folded and unfolded, the DJI Mini 3 Pro is a good bit smaller than the Air 3. And this just makes it easier to transport and easier to fit into a camera bag. There's a saying that the best camera to use is the one you always have with you. And this applies to drones as well. By having a small drone like the DJI Mini 3 Pro, it means you're more likely to have it on you more of the time. And this means that you're going to be flying it more and capturing more footage and images with it. The Mini 3 Pro is so small, it can just about fit into any space in any bag. Whereas with the Air 3, it's more likely likely you need a larger camera bag to carry it with you. And when it comes to portability, we also have to mention the drone's weight. The Mini 3 Pro weighs 249 grams, whereas the Air 3 weighs 720 grams. The Mini 3 Pro being a super light drone, if you have this drone in your backpack, you're barely going to notice it in there when you're carrying it around. Whereas if you have the Air 3 in your backpack, you are going to notice carrying around that heavier weight. And one of the biggest things to consider when it comes to the drone weight is drone regulations. And with the DJI Mini 3 Pro weighing under 250 grams, this allows you to fly it in the UK in the least restricted way. You can fly it in the A1 open category. With the Air 3 weighing 720 grams, however, this means that you have more restrictions when flying this drone. And you will need to fly this drone in the UK in the A3 category, unless you do the A2 CFC theory test, which is a paid course you can do online with a supervised theory test at the end, which when complete will then allow you to fly the Air 3 in the A2 less restricted category. That being said, if you're looking to fly your drone in the least restricted way possible, the Mini 3 Pro has the advantage. Looking now at the noise level these drones make, which is a very important factor nowadays, especially as a beginner. The last thing you want is people watching you flying your drone, coming over and asking you questions, and breaking your concentration while you're trying to nail the basics. YouTube is also full of drone confrontation videos nowadays, and most of these confrontations are completely unnecessary. Now DJI drones are getting quieter and quieter these days and both these drones are relatively quiet. However, the Mini 3 Pro is definitely noticeably quieter than the Air 3. With the Mini 3 Pro 15 or 20 meters above you in the air, you're going to struggle to hear it. Here is a quick comparison between the noise levels of these two drones. Another area where the Mini 3 Pro excels is being able to capture true 4K vertical video. And this is achievable because the gimbal in the Mini 3 Pro can actually rotate round to that vertical orientation to allow you to capture true 4K vertical videos. Now the Air 3 can also capture 2.7K vertical video. However, this is a crop. The gimbal doesn't rotate round on the Air 3. This is achieved by it digitally cropping in on the footage. There is, however, a really nice feature on the Air three and that is when you're using this mode you can actually see which parts of your video are going to be cropped out but if you're looking for the highest quality 
vertical video possible for social media websites such as Instagram, then the Mini 3 Pro is slightly better in this area. When it comes to price, the Mini 3 Pro is also cheaper than the Air 3. With the DJI Mini 3 Pro and the DJI RCN1 controller bundle, that's the controller that you attach your phone to and use the DJI Fly app, coming in at £709. Compared to the DJI Air 3 and the DJI RCN2 bundle, again that's the controller that you attach your phone to, but this is the slightly upgraded version of that controller, which allows Ogisync 4.0, coming in at £906. £62. Talking about price, something else that's worth considering is that you can pick up the DJI Mini 3 Pro by itself as a drone only purchase, but with the DJI Air 3, you have to purchase a controller with it. So this might be an advantage if you own a slightly older drone, such as a DJI Mini 2, which uses the DJI RCM1 controller, and you want to upgrade to the Mini 3 Pro. Well, you can just buy the drone only and use the RCM1 controller you already have to fly this drone without having to pick up an additional controller, saving yourself some money. So moving over now to the DJI Air 3. And let's take a look at seven reasons why you might want to consider this drone or upgrade to it over the Mini 3 Pro, starting with the camera quality and dual camera system. Although both these drones have the same sensor size, a one over 1.3 inch CMOS sensor, the Air 3 has a newer generation stacked sensor, which supports up to 4K 60fps HDR. Putting some footage side by side on the screen now, you can definitely see an improvement over the Mini 3. However, let's not talk down the footage coming from the Mini 3 Pro. The quality you can get from the Mini 3 Pro is really impressive. I have captured some truly stunning clips with this little drone over the past year, and without putting the footage side by side, I think you would be more than happy with the quality from the Mini 3 Pro. However, I do think the Air 3 does provide better looking quality as expected overall. With the Air 3, you also get a dual camera system. So you have two primary cameras. Alongside the 1 over 1.3 inch 24 millimeter wide angle camera, you also get an additional 1 over 1.3 inch 70 millimeter telecamera which is the equivalent of a three times zoom. Now this second telecamera opens up lots of creative possibilities. I really enjoy using this second telecamera as it gives you a completely different perspective compared to that wide angle camera. And it also allows you to achieve things such as parallax and background compression, which is where the background seems like it's pulled closer to your subject. This camera also has the advantage of if you don't want to fly close to a subject, maybe you're doing a tracking move of a car, for example, and you want to keep the drone a safe distance back from it, well, you can use that three times telecamera to zoom in so that you can get the close shot you want it, but you don't have to fly the drone that close to the subject. Now, while we're on the subject of quality, one of the things that will make a massive difference to the quality of your drone videos and sequences is sound effects and music. Simply take a look at this before and after. Big difference, right? Adding sound effects and music can make your sequences and drone videos seem much more professional and engaging. Now, if you're looking for the best music and sound effects to use in your drone videos, then I highly recommend and use Epidemic Sound. They have over 40,000 tracks in a range of genres and playlists that are easy to browse and search for that perfect song. They also have 90,000 diverse sound effects. So if you need the sound of waves crashing, a waterfall, etc., they have you covered. They also own 100% of all their music and sound effects. And because they are royalty free, you are safe to use them in your projects even when uploading to social media sites such as Instagram or YouTube. If you would like to give their platform a try, you can use the link in the description down below to receive a free one month trial and see how their music and sound effects can elevate your drone videos and sequences. The next big advantage the Air 3 has over the Mini 3 Pro is that this drone has omnidirectional obstacle avoidance. Using the two fisheye sensors on the front and back of this drone and binocular lenses and a 3D infrared 
infrared sensor on the bottom, the Air 3 can see 360 degrees around itself. Comparing this to the Mini 3 Pro's tri-directional obstacle avoidance system, you lose that sideways and upwards obstacle detection compared to the Air 3. Being able to have the drone detect obstacles sideways is a massive advantage over the Mini 3 Pro and is going to make the Air 3 safer overall when flying. A lot of the time you are tracking yourself or subjects, the drone will be flying sideways along next to them. So having the drone being able to see any obstacles coming up to the side of it and either breaking or flying around them automatically, again is going to make this much safer when doing them tracking moves. While we're talking about tracking, the Air 3 comes with the improved Active Track 5.0 system compared to the Mini 3 Pro, which has Active Track 4.0. Firstly, Active Track 5.0 can use subject recognition to recognize what it's tracking and you can see this working when you draw that tracking box over a subject for example here you can see it's recognized we're tracking a person whereas here you can see it's recognized we're tracking a car and it can change how it tracks accordingly to plan a more optimal tracking route so that you can get smooth and stable footage. Active Track 5.0 also improves out of sight traceability and movement prediction. So if you go out of frame for a few seconds and then walk back into frame, Active Track 5.0 can actually pick you back up and continue tracking. Active Track 5.0 also has eight different tracking positions that you can choose using this scroll wheel when tracking. So you can have the drone track you from behind to the left, in front, and you can also change this direction while tracking. The DJI Air 3 also comes with an improved transmission system, OcuSync 4.0, compared to the DJI Mini 3 Pro's OcuSync 3.0. Now, OcuSync 4.0 is an upgrade to a six antenna system, two transmitters and four receivers to significantly improve video transmission performance. And if you fly in Europe, there's been a new frequency band added, 5.1 gigahertz to improve transmission performance. This allows you to achieve a reported max transmission distance with the Air 3 of 20 kilometers FCC and 10 kilometers CE compared to a reported max transmission distance for the Mini 3 Pro of 12 kilometers FCC and 8 kilometers CE. Now it's most likely you're not going to be flying your drone out to these distances, especially as you have to abide by visual line of sight rules. But where this actually makes a difference is when you're flying low to the ground or around obstacles. And in these areas, I have found that the OcuSync 4.0 transmission system compared to the OcuSync 3.0 transmission system on the Mini 3 Pro offers a much more stable and reliable signal, especially when flying in these scenarios. Now, because of the upgraded antenna system with OcuSync 4.0, the Air 3 comes with two new controllers. The DJI RC2, this is the controller with the screen on it, and this is an upgraded version of the DJI RC controller. With the upgrades including a new antenna system being upgraded from one transmitter to two transmitters, and the controller now features these new fold-out antennas on the top of the controller. The performance of the processor of this controller has also been improved. Then we also have the new DJI RC N2 controller. That's the controller you attach your phone to to be able to fly using the DJI Fly app. And this controller improves over the older DJI RC N1 by again having that upgraded antenna system from one transmitter to two transmitters, allowing you to also use this controller to fly the Air 3 with AugieSync 4.0. When it comes to wind resistance, although the Mini 3 Pro is fairly capable with a max wind resistance of 10.7 meters per second, the Air 3 ages it out with a max wind resistance of 12 meters per second. When you have the Mini 3 Pro in the air on a windy day, because it's lighter and less powerful, you will see this drone move around in the air quite a bit. Because the Air 3 is a bigger, more powerful and heavier drone, it can stay more stable in the air when the wind speeds start to get higher. And when it comes to speed, the Air 3 is incredibly fast, especially when ascending and descending. The Air 3 has a max ascent speed and max descent speed of 10 meters per second, which is twice that of the Mini 3 Pro, which has a max ascent and descent speed of five meters per second. And you really notice this in two areas. Firstly, when you're trying to get your drone high in the air quickly to get it into position to capture some footage, the rate 
at which the Air 3 can ascend is really impressive, but also while descending. I have been in scenarios before where you're trying to get your drone down quickly, maybe it started spitting rain, and the Mini 3 Pro sometimes can feel like it takes forever to descend. But with the Air 3's 10 meters per second descent speed, this drone descends super fast. When it comes to flight time, the Air 3 also has the advantage with a max flight time of 46 minutes. Compare this to the max flight time of the Mini 3 Pro, which is 34 minutes, and you can see that you're going to be able to have the Air 3 in the air for longer. Now there is the Intelligent Flight Battery Plus available for the Mini 3 Pro, which does give it a max flight time of 47 minutes. However, this battery is not available in the UK. And it's also worth considering that this battery is heavier. So when it's inserted into your Mini 3 Pro, it pushes the drone's weight over 250 grams, meaning this can affect the regulations around how and where you're allowed to fly it. Another thing worth considering when purchasing one of these drones is that the Air 3 allows you to use waypoints. Now waypoints allows you to either plot points on a map or to move your drone to different locations and record them points and then have your drone fly a route automatically between them. You can also have the drone do different actions at these points, such as start or stop recording or take images. And this can be good if you want to capture the exact same type of video over and over again to maybe show things such as the changing of seasons. This can also be helpful for things like surveying, mapping or inspections. This is not possible on the Mini 3 Pro, which does have waypoints, but these are only available to use for taking hyperlapses. So in the end, I definitely think that the Air 3 is a healthy upgrade over the Mini 3 Pro in terms of performance, flight time and camera quality. But at the same time, the Mini 3 Pro still holds its own, especially when it comes to size, portability, being regulation friendly and price even though it's been over a year since its release date. So hopefully that helps you make an informed decision if you're considering purchasing one of these drones or upgrading from the Mini 3 Pro to the Air 3. And if you would like to find out more about these drones or pick one of them up, I will put links in the description down below. Now, before you go, if you liked this video and you learned something new, please let me know by giving me the thumbs up and clicking that like button down below. And if you love all things drones and want to know how to get better images and more cinematic videos with your drone, then I have a ton of other content on my channel which will help you level up your drone game. If you don't want to miss any of my upcoming videos, then please remember to click that subscribe button and make sure that you also tick the notification bell when you're down there so that you will be alerted when one of my new tutorials is released. If you want to stick around and watch a few more of my videos now, then here's a few I personally recommend. I'll not keep you back any further. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you over there.